You guys, I am so excited for this week's video because this has been something that I have wanted to accomplish since we were building this house. This was in my head. I probably saw, I wasn't on Pinterest back then, so it was probably on house. Um, and there was all of these like acid stained concrete finishes. And I thought, well, why can't we just do that with paint? So now over the years, it's been nine years that we've lived in this house. Um, in August, it'll be nine years. And I finally got an excuse or a reason to get this flooring done. So this is my new craft space um, recording studio for my Sunday YouTube videos. And it was a perfect, perfect space to experiment on. So I'm super excited you're here and I hope that this tutorial gives you kind of a breakdown on how I did this. Um, as usual, I've never done this before, so you're, you're with me for the ride. Um, a lot of this video is in time lapse, so you're not having to kind of suffer through the monotony of the process, but I will explain it in detail as I'm going. So if you have any questions at all about this process, feel free to put it in the comments or send me an email, whatever you prefer, and I will do my best to answer those questions. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoy it. So this is the plan. We got to build some walls. First, this pool table has to get moved. This is an old janky pub pool table that we we ended up with years ago and it's just kind of sitting there. But it's heavy and because it's actual slate and it's someday I'm gonna fix this up. That's my plan, but whatever. I haven't done that yet. So I gotta move it. So I decided I'm gonna jack it up and put it on these snowmobile dollies so I can wheel it around on the basement floor. And this actually worked out perfectly. I was able to tuck it out of my way. And of course, this all had to inspect. And then first thing is to wash this floor. So I swept it, vacuumed it and swept it really well. And now I'm just giving it a wash just to make sure that my surface, you always got to wash before you paint, right? So that's all I'm doing here. These spin mops are the best invention ever. Love this thing. And now I'm trying to protect my walls because I know this is going to be a little bit of a splashy project. So I have this, it's kind of like a cling film. It just kind of sticks itself to the wall and hoping to protect the paint so I don't have to repaint right away. And then, I don't know if you've seen people do epoxy floors, but they have these fancy kind of cleat shoes, and I thought, well, I can make those. So I put a whole bunch of one-inch screws through this little chunk of wood and figured I'm just going to tape those to my shoes. It's going to work perfectly. Um, we'll see. So this is layered chocolate, very watered down. I probably put about four ounces of paint in about a liter and a half of water, two liters of water. This is a base coat. So I'm just putting this watered down paint as a base to kind of get me started on what I want to do for a paint finish on this floor. So I'm just smushing it all around with my my spin mop so now i've made another mix of layered chocolate but this one's more paint heavy and i have some summer crush and some old 57 just in old dish soap bottles i always save them because they're handy for stuff like this and I'm just experimenting to see how I'm going to get the look that I want to get. So I'm just kind of slapping paint down and trying not to break my neck on my fancy little shoes. And it's not really working. So I end up just adding water and smushing it around and just basically erasing technically everything that I'd done and start over. So after a couple good slips, I gave up on my fancy little cleat shoes, my homemade cleat shoes, and just took those off before I broke my neck. 
I did discover then too that actually pouring the paint into my hand and then just splashing it on the floor where I needed it worked a lot better than direct from the nozzle on those dish soap bottles. And now I've got my compressor to be able to blow things around. I usually on small projects I'll use my heat tool or a blow dryer. This is a big project and I didn't want to crawl around with a blow dryer so I dug out an old compressor and just turned it on really low and I'm using that to move everything around. This also blew right up behind my um, so-called cling wrap on the walls so I'm gonna have to fix my walls eventually. so bad I don't mind that. Now let's get this part. So this is mostly water. We're just going to call this water. And I'm going to lay down some water first. Some brown yucky water. heavily pigmented with brown so I'm going to come in and I'm going to put some of that down summer crush. I'm finding I'm having better control if I just pour it in my hand and kind of splish it out there. It's working better for me. I think. just a little bit of water just to add a little bit more help for some movement. And then I'm going to grab my compressor again.
to come in here and absorb some of this. down in spots that I think are kind of wonky and it fills back in right away and actually ends up looking kind of cool and I don't know if you guys can see that this is hard to film okay so there's a little bit of a deep spot right here and I'm just going to come in I'm going to slap this down let it absorb a little bit I'm not moving it around I'm just grabbing okay and I've got one other spot right there see this big kind of swirl I want, it's a little bit too, it's a little bit too. So I'm gonna try to pick some of that up. So I don't know why that was such a workout, but it was a workout. And um, this is where I'm at. So I'm just going to flip you around. So I've got the fan going on it right now, but it's drying really fast. DIY paint dries super fast. So it's looking very chalky and um, kind of bleh as it dries. But once I seal it, I think it'll be pretty cool. So we'll see what happens. I can hardly wait to see this sealed up so the colors are all deep and luscious like they get. So this is first coat of my sealer and I'm just using Minwax Polycrylic in clear satin. 
I didn't want it to be high gloss, but I didn't want it to be flat either. So this clear satin ended up being absolutely the perfect sheen for what I wanted. And you can see as I'm going how that just deepens up the color. DIY paint is always so, so gorgeous when you seal it. It just gets really deep and rich. I'm also just using a regular roller for on your wall. I think these are home hardware rollers. So you can buy them anywhere, any hardware store. And they're just for a smooth wall finish. It's not a foam roller. It's not a big, thick, poofy roller. It's just your standard paint the wall roller. Nothing fancy, just what I had on hand. Same with the clear coat, actually. I used it because I had it. Um, I wasn't running to town for special stuff or anything like that. This, this worked perfectly. This is the second coat and it looks gorgeous. Like, look how this turned out. It is so amazing. I love the color. I love all the depth. There's so much movement and it's just beautiful. I absolutely love how this turned out. I'm so excited to start moving stuff in. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that this inspired you if you've got a boring basement floor that needs some color.